Human papilloma virus, better known as HPV, is a leading cause of cervical cancer among women and other anogenital cancers with a higher rate of 24% of global figure reported in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, people often have a strong emotional reaction to the word cancer, but not without reason due to its destructive nature on the human body and the high, high mortality rate. Now, the disease condition is often worse in developing countries like Nigeria due to late diagnosis, lack of access to treatment and modern facilities for management, especially cervical cancer, the fourth most common cancer among women globally. But what many don't know is that cancer treatment and outcome is improving by the day to reduce the mortality rate with the introduction of a human papilloma virus HPV vaccine by the Primary Healthcare Development Agency to protect teenage girls against cervical cancer and other related diseases and to bring to minimum the death rates in Nigeria. The WHO estimates that cervical cancer can be eliminated if 90% of girls receive the prophylactic HPV vaccination, 70% of women screened and 90% of women with diseases receive treatment. Now, this can only be achieved through diligent implementation and a multi-sectoral approach to ensure a successful rollout of the vaccine in October 2023. And to discuss more on this is Dr. Basi Okwesen, Director of Disease Control and Humanization, National Primary Health Care Development Agency. This is Weekend File from the Network Service of the NTA. I am Jumma Yasof. First, let's get the news. <laughs> We begin with reports from the 78th UN National Assembly as Nigerian government has launched a new program towards actualization of its plan to create 50 million jobs for Nigerians. The National Talent Export Program, NATEP, was launched at the Microsoft Corporate Office in New York on the margins of the 78th United Nations General Assembly. State House correspondent Musbaud and Wahab tells us more. Long before the current wave of Japa syndrome, the warning has been drumming as Nigeria loses talents in droves to the industrialized countries. But then, the current administration has apparently identified an opportunity in this seeming adversity. <laughs> NATEP is coming as the game changer. The four pronged objectives of the NATEP initiative are as follows. One, to deliver one million export, service export jobs over the next five years. Two, to increase foreign exchange earnings and revenue for Nigeria. Three, to create economic growth and to stimulate the growth of ancillary industries and support services. And four, to improve skills and strengthen the Nigerian brand. The growing youthful unemployed population and about 1.7 million Nigerians being produced annually by higher learning institutions and how to be converted to the product the world is looking for for the fast-growing artificial intelligence and big data industries. From my ministry in contribution to what the Honorable Minister is doing, we are actually investing in becoming the, the destination for artificial intelligence uh, talent especially when it comes to how you train AI models. This is an area where we believe that the world needs a lot of talent and we think Nigeria can quickly ramp up and train people who can become great at training the AI model. And in the process of that, we can supply that talent to the rest of the world. Like an idea of whose time has come, the program is already gaining momentum with support from top tech companies. We hope that we will be able to provide support to NATEP through the continuous reskilling and upskilling of the workforce that will be a part of this initiative. Nigeria has a great amount of content to deliver to the world. Nigeria should be providing apps for Africa and the world. NATEP aims at positioning Nigeria as a leading global hub for service exports and talent sourcing in Africa is also projected to take one million Nigerians off the labor markets annually, 
and for the next five years. From New York, Muspal and Wahab, NC News. Meanwhile, la land degradation, food insecurity, and the plight of rural dwellers form the core of discussions among leaders, policymakers, development, and funding partners on the sidelines of the ongoing United Nations General Assembly. Cecil Egbele reports that reports from the AU permanent mission to the United Nations venue of the meeting. The meeting themed attracting investment in land restoration, food systems and rural transformation in Africa, hosted by the African Union Development Agency, Aldo Nepard, Nigerian Secretariat, emphasized that for food to continue to be in plenty, the land should be treated as a prized possession. There is only one way forward, which is massive investment in sustainable land use, such as financing of business and contribution to biodiversity and adaptation. The Nigerian government reported on efforts being made to ensure that the concerns of smallholder farmers are addressed. The Nigerian government is providing extensive support to smallholder farmers in seedlings, agricultural incentives, and agricultural facilities to optimize investments and job creation across the country. Data from Alden Nepart states that one in four Africans suffer from chronic hunger, while 60% of the African population are rural dwellers, whose primary occupation is agriculture. These farmers, they say, should be treated right. These initiatives are not solely about land restoration. They are catalysts for sustainable agriculture and economic growth. In two panel sessions, facts, challenges, opportunities and ways forward were posed as factors to be considered to achieve maximum results. From the African Union Mission in New York, I'm Cecile Egbele reporting. Back home, the federal government in its effort to actualize the administration's eight-point agenda of renewed hope has pledged its commitment to strengthen bilateral relations with the People's Republic of China for deepened economic cooperation that will be mutually beneficial for both countries. The Minister of State Steel Development, Uba Megari Ahmadu, who represented Vice President Kashim Shatima, said this at the Mid-Autumn Festival and Chinese National Day celebration held in Lagos. He reiterated the need for expansion of trade opportunities and technological cooperation, stating government's readiness to ensure responsible business practices that will further deepen the collaboration. Commercial Council of the Chinese Consulate said large volume of trade between both countries is strengthening economic stability and improving transport networks. The Minister of Interior, Olubumi Tunji Ojo, is making efforts to strengthen Nigeria's relations with the European Union. A statement by its media advisor, Baba Tunde Alao, indicates that while playing host to Ambassador of the European Union to Nigeria, Samuel Isopi in Abuja, the minister stated that the ministry is implementing key reforms in the areas of migration and the reformation of Nigeria's correctional facilities. The minister described the relationship with the EU as historical, noting that areas of bond with the ministry's key reforms, including combating illegal migration, unearthing organized crime, and upholding the rule of law, which he says the EU could support with technology to enhance travel documentation processes and border management. The ambassador assured the minister of support from the European Union in that regard. Now, the quest by the current administration towards poverty eradication has been given a boost as President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has approved the Presidential Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Beta Edu, disclosed this at a high-level side event of the 78th United Nations in New York. State House correspondent, again, was about on Wahab reports. This was somewhere in Nigeria, a part of the more than 16 million people caught in the web of humanitarian crisis. They have in turn joined the list of Nigerians below the poverty line. 
more than half the population of the country are in this category. And they become, uh, this is part of the humanitarian challenges Nigeria has taken on to the world stage as it calls for help. We have a serious situation on our hands in Nigeria. Nigeria's government had initiated many social intervention programs to tackle poverty. The Presidential Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund is the latest measure aimed at expanding the social safety nets. 30% of the fundings expected in this trust fund will be coming from the government of Nigeria and it's expected that the rest of this funding come from other nations, the United Nations, donor agencies, um, philanthropic individuals, private sector, who we want to bring fully into the space, amongst other forms of um, innovative fund raising. The essence is for us to be able to adequately address the issues which we face on ground as a matter of urgency. And beyond this demonstration of commitment, the government is building partnerships as it searches for a durable solution. We are bearing on the whole brunt of this terrible thing. The world need to know that. We do not have the capacity to address it alone. Prioritizing the needs of women and girls and the most vulnerable is at the heart of durable solutions. The most difficult aspect of the protection and care needed for the internal displaced is the durable and integrated solutions. Your government's framework on durable solutions is an answer to that call by our Secretary General. It puts Nigeria in the vanguard of the 16 pilot countries identified for durable solutions under that agenda. So I thank you. So the sustainability is what we, the, the entire conversation has been on. So how we can pull resources together and then provide tangible solutions that will actually take people out of the IDP camps. Leadership is important for everything to fall in place. Uh, uh, President Bola Ahmed Chinibu has taken up the charge and is providing that strong leadership for development to occur. The United Nations maintains poverty elevation remains the bedrock towards attainment of the rest of a sustainable development agenda. And Nigeria also realizes it must get this foundation right. From New York, Muspal and Wahab, NT News. In keeping to the promise of constructing a superhighway that will open the window of investment opportunities beyond the shore of the country, the Federal Ministry of Works is reviewing the inception report for the proposed lagos calabar Coastal Highway. The Minister of Works, David Umayi, believes the project will not only create industrial clusters, but equally ease connectivity between the six geopolitical zones of the country and beyond. Mike Olale reports. The concept behind the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway was inspired by the need to create an economically vibrant road network across communities, obviously difficult to navigate through the land. And according to the inception report presented by the representative of the contractor, it is a 657 kilometers project starting from the Eko Atlantic City to connect with the growing trade corridor in Lekki down to Edo, Delta, and finally terminating at Calabar. We hope this will happen very soon. It's, it's very important for the government, for the country, and for the people of Nigeria. The minister said the project is the brainchild of President Bola Tinubu, believing it is the catalyst for economic prosperity, creating a ready-made platform for investors to tap in as the project has ports connecting Ogoja in Cross River States and Cameroon. This project is going to be delivered in phases. Any section we complete, we will toll it, and then the business and transportation will start. Let me say that the right of way of this project is about 100 meters uh, in a corridor. The essence of it is that we're going to have a lot of development in you know, tourism, mostly along the corridor of this road. There is provision for rail line. Uh, you know, at the middle of the road. The superhighway expected to have four carriage lanes will follow the engineering trend of solid concrete pavements of 11 inches thick, and these, the minister believes, will expand the production capacity of cement industries in the country. For reason of this very innovative idea, Mr. President, on concrete roads, 
many cement factories are coming up, uh, local contact, and we can even, you know, say that we have a project and we are sure of the cost, you know, at least within a year. With the review of inception reports done, another meeting will be convened in the next two weeks where the business case will be unveiled and the letter of ownership presented to the contractor. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. In a few days from now, Nigeria will be 63 years after independence, and the federal government plans to mark the anniversary low-key and to keep Nigerians abreast and the international community on events scheduled for the low-key celebration. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation and Chairman Interministerial Committee on Nigeria's 63rd Independence Anniversary, Senator George Akume, is inviting all members of the Interministerial Committee, civil society, organizations, stakeholders in the media industry, and interested members of the public to World Press Conference to mark the celebration scheduled to hold on Monday 25th September 2023 at the National Press Center, Radio House, Area 10, Gurki Abuja, by 11 a.m. The statement issued by Mohammed Idris, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, who also chairs the Media and Publicity Subcommittee, advises those participating in the press conference to be punctual. Talking a little bit of sports, the 10th edition of the Power Forward, a youth development program that promotes, that provides life skills, public health awareness, and basketball development has been described as a remarkable success by the stakeholders. This year's event climaxed with a basketball championship at the Moshud Abiola National Stadium, Abuja. Austin Idemodu tells us more. It was an action-packed event and display of talented skills in basketball as government secondary school have co-defeated government secondary school zone three in this year's final of the Power Forward Boys Basketball Championship. In the girls' finals, government secondary school would say had the upper hand against Total Child Mother School all in Abuja. <laughs> It was the climax of the 10th edition of the Power Forward initiative, which featured 250,000 boys and girls across 40 schools in Abuja. Participants also have remarkable experiences to share after benefiting from the Power Forward Junior MBA clinic involving 1,200 children, malaria geopardy game, and alumni summit. With the help of Power Forward now, I could say that I'm a good basketballer. In other words, Power Forward is a home away from home because they give you this comfort that your home gives you too. But when you go to the next place, to the next community, please be, be an ambassador of this program so that we can keep it going and make it bigger for the next kids to come. The Power Forward Community Development and Capacity Building Initiatives amongst the youth population is powered by the NBA, Pan Africa, and Ezon Mobile. If you look at the multiply effect, you're looking about millions of young people and their communities that have been reached by this program. And I'm also very proud of um, the work we are doing with malaria prevention, uh, the bed nets we've, uh, we've uh, been able to distribute, the rapid diagnostic kits. The idea of this program is to be able to leverage the transformative power of basketball to really impact the youth. And what does that mean? That basically means while kids are learning and enjoying playing basketball, how can you impact knowledge in them? And we've been very intentional that with the way the program has been designed, we've been able to equip life skills. We're hoping that the project also will impact more lives uh, going forward and that more schools uh, will be involved in, in the implementation of this project. In Abuja, I'm Austin Edemodu, NTA News. We can file with back with more reports in a moment. Do stay. Yo, welcome back. Now, Nigeria is set to introduce human papilloma virus HPV vaccine for every female child between the ages of 9 to 15 years across the country. Now, this underlines commitment of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency to defeat cancer. Now, what is papilloma virus to human health? And what is the state of preparation to ensure seamless rollout and uptake of the HPV vaccine? Olishe Adebo in this background report six answers to these questions. 
The hope of ending the growing human papilloma virus strain that have been identified to cause at least 99% of cervical cancer cases received a boost in 2006, the year the first HPV vaccine became available with the World Health Organization, WHO, recommending it as part of routine vaccinations in all countries along with other preventive measures. In the U.S. CDC reports, HPV vaccination works extremely well as the job has the potential to prevent more than 90% of HPV attributable cancers. Since 2006, infections with HPV types have dropped by 88% among teenage girls and 81% among young adult women. Human papilloma virus HPV is a commonly transmitted infection that can lead to various health issues, including cervical cancers. UNICEF is playing an active role in the HPV vaccine into Nigeria and for Eduardo Saladis, UNICEF chief of health in the country. This is a project long overdue for Nigerians. It's going to be fully for free, with no cost for people going to, for, for young girls going to public health facilities. So we as UNICEF, we are supporting in social behavior change. For the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, all is set to introduce the human papilloma virus HPV vaccine to Nigeria's immunization schedule and has also been strengthening synergy with relevant actors, including traditional and religious leaders. Why we're breaking barriers, thinking about technology and how we can use this for our medical practice, we also recognize that faith is very, very critical and it drives Nigerians. So bringing this together can only be a win-win situation. We have used the churches, the pulpit, uh, religious leaders to communicate those messages and to share with mothers and fathers that their children are better off when they are vaccinated. And we believe that uh, the Muslim community will mobilize that all the agencies of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs will sensitize the community, the Muslims, through the length and breadth of Nigeria to be conscious of their responsibilities to their family, to their community, through the uh, provision and the utilization of health facilities. As players in Nigeria's vaccination program look forward to seeing the HPV vaccination kick off, they are also imploring the authorities to give priority to local vaccine production. In Abuja, Ulusheye Diagbo, NT News. And stakeholders in Enugu and Eboin State are intensifying efforts to create awareness about the life-saving human papilloma virus vaccine against cervical cancer. Susan Eze reports that experts are convinced that the vaccine will go a long way in changing the statistics of cancer building in Nigeria. As deadly as cervical cancer is known to be, it has been described as one of the most preventable and treatable forms of cancer. With a recommendation by the World Health Organization of the human papilloma virus vaccine as an effective antidote to cervical cancer, healthcare providers are of the view that enrolling the vaccine into the nation's routine immunization shadow would be the game changer. And if effectively implemented, it will help make the huge burden of cervical cancer disappear over time. They are bringing this vaccination free. The best thing our people can do is to bring out our daughters to come and be vaccinated because that will protect them from cervical cancer. In Ebony State, there are more presentations of cervical cancer cases in recent time. They even go to churches, go to their August meeting and then even talk to the wife of the governor to talk to the women to come for the screening. That's why you see sometimes you go there, you see a lot of people coming out there. The only other problem we have is trying to identify the prevalent serotypes of the HPV in Nigeria. And we wanted to commission a research work on that, but the cost of that research was quite expensive. According to a World Health Organization report, clinical trials and post-marketing surveillance have shown that HPV vaccines are safe and effective in preventing human papilloma virus infections. This, however, works best if administered 
prior to exposure to the virus. In Enugu, Susan Eze, NTA News. And joining me in the studio is Dr. Basi Okwasen, Director of Disease Control and Immunization National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Thanks for joining us on Weekend File. Thank you. Good evening, Nigerians. Let's begin with you telling us what the human papilloma virus is and apart from cervical cancer, does it also cause other diseases? Yes, um, human papilloma virus is a group of viruses that can cause infection in man. There are over 200 strains of it, but nine are most common cause of problems in human. Those nine are the type 6, type 11, 16, 18, 31, 35, 52, 58. Those ones are the ones that cause most of the problems in human. Now, the thing with human papilloma virus, again, is the fact that it is the most commonest cause of sexually transmitted infection in human beings. Research have also shown and is documented that over 95% of adults have at one time or the other been infected with the human papilloma virus. 90% of people that have the infection will not show any sign or symptom. It resolves on its own. But for the other one that prog uh, progress to show some signs, you see it commonly as the genital warts, warts around the genital region for both men and women, which some of them resolve on their own and then some progress. And then you have also documented very clearly in Nigeria, every year we have about 73,417 confirmed cases of cancer in women in Nigeria. Out of this, about 12,075 alone are cervical cancer. Of this amount, the number of women that are diagnosed every year, 80% of them died. And if you want to look at the absolute figure, about 8,967 women die in Nigeria. These are our sisters, these are our mothers, these are our daughters, and these are diseases that would have been prevented. And you realize that from research, it has shown that 95, over 95% 95 of cervical cancer are caused by infection with human papilloma virus. Imagine, and when we have in this age vaccines that can prevent. So what it means is if we have our girls, our boys, giving this vaccine, preventing them from being infected with the human papilloma virus infection, we will have this number of girls and boys saved from the infection and complications that come from human papilloma virus infection. So what you're saying, it's not only girls, teenage girls you're targeting now, you're also targeting boys. Yes, the human papilloma virus infection can progress to the cervical cancer in women. It can also cause vulva, vaginal cancers. It can cause genital, penile cancers in men. It can also cause oropharyngeal cancers at the base of the tongue and so on. There are so many other things it can cause both in male and female. But for us in Nigeria, because of the quantity, the availability of vaccines, we are starting with the girls. But the fact that we have most of the cases, the complications from girls than the boys, and from the lessons from other countries. So with the vaccines we are having now, we will start with the girls in another three to before five years. We will also give to the boys so that both boys and girls will be protected from the infection with human papilloma virus. What are the required number of doses? For doses, at the beginning, there were some that were three doses. There were some, and up to today, that are two doses. We want to thank His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Nigeria, the Honor Minister of Health, Professor Pate, and the ED of the NPSD, Dr. Faisal, and all our partners, UNICEF, WHO, Gavi, and the rest, who are making effort and are making available the best of the vaccines in the world for our girl child. We will be using Gadaxil. The U.S. is using about 92% of the vaccination with HPV is Gadaxil. The U.K. about 64%. The Asian also about 60% of the vaccine used are Gadaxil. 
The one we'll be using in Nigeria is this Galaxy, the best in the world, and will only be one single dose. That okay. is the advantage we have. Once the girl, child, boy, given the vaccine one dose, will be protected against infection with human papilloma virus. What about those who already have the virus? Will the vaccine do anything to reduce it? Now, in the advanced country, if you look at U.S., they started vaccination in 2006, the U.K. 2008. For their vaccination program, they have enough of the vaccine is from nine years to 26 years, boys and girls that they administer the same thing in UK. For us in Nigeria, because we've not gotten that adequate number of vaccine to go to that um, age group, what we advise is for the older persons, especially female now, specific to the question you've asked, who are 26 years and above, we advise yearly screening for them. If as I mentioned earlier, eighty percent of cases that come come when they are late and when nothing or little can be done and eighty percent of them died. If it's detected early, there are actions that will be taken and the woman will be prevented from serious complications. So for those that are above those age grade range, we advise that they do yearly screening. There are a few persons that also have the resources who go to private clinic. After the screening and they still want to take the vaccine, it is not a contraindication. As I mentioned earlier, there are so many strains of the virus, so they will be protected against the several other strains that they did not have protection against. So they should screen before going for that in uh, the vaccination. But okay. for the program now, the quantity of vaccines we have, we are pleading that our girl child, 9 to 14 years, Please be presented for this vaccination. Okay, Dr. Basti, we'll get to talk about efforts you'll be making to create awareness and sensitize the public on the vaccine when we come back from this break. Don't go away. Do stay. You're welcome back. Several cervical cancer cases are diagnosed annually in Nigeria. Hence, government and health professionals have advocated early detection of symptoms presented to hospital as key to averting the emergence of papilloma virus in the body. Now, in this report, Rafia Anima Shaun Badmos examines prevalence of papilloma virus in some parts of southwestern Nigeria. To guide against untimely death among women, on those state government organized free cervical cancer screening across the states. For a woman in particular infected with human papilloma virus, uh, they need to do this screening test to determine the level of closeness to getting a firm cervical cancer or they are actually getting a cervical cancer. From it comes the report that from a recent free cervical cancer screening carried out by the state government, investigation reveals that in every 1,000 women, an estimated 10% are liable to have cases of human papilloma virus in the state. The carrier of that virus during the active stage might not even know that it's having that uh, virus until the words possibly starts coming out, when the words are coming out. Who might say, okay, human papilloma virus testing is the most efficient or the in terms of evidence, but even VIA can equally be as effective if we deploy it very well. In terms of uh, human, um, human power, as in resources, infrastructure, where there are no radiotherapies in hospital, even if a woman comes with advanced disease, the, uh, the probability of them surviving is very, very slim. Through cervical screening, they however advocate regular screening exercise, vaccination, and access to medical care as some of the way forward to tackle the disease in Ibadan. Rofia Animation Badmos, NT News. The struggle for cervical cancer survival remains a source of concern to stakeholders considering the cost implication associated with the management of the disease. Now, government in collaboration with relevant stakeholders are making efforts towards providing interventions that will assist those affected. Achari Maxwell takes a look at the situation in Kaduna and Kano states. 
Cervical cancer caused by the papilloma virus is a malignant tumor of the lowermost part of the uterus that can be prevented by pap smear screening. From Barodi Cotitin Hospital, Kaduna, reports have it that 300 out of 500 women die from cervical cancer annually despite interventions. There may be no symptoms in most cases. In few cases, however, the patients may present irregular bleeding or abdominal pains. The actual cause of uh, cervical cancer is a viral um, organism which is called the human papilloma virus in most cases over 90 percent is caused by that through uh, sexual transmission mostly however there are other causes and then we have a lot of risk factors that's things factors that like multiple sexual partners for now, there is no registered government oncology center in the country for the management of cervical cancer and other forms of cancers, thereby leaving greater negative impact on the economic well-being of women, especially in northern Nigeria. Kaduna State Government is putting this issue on the top of its priority list of programs. We are going to add it in our submission that the government should look into it and all the partners that have come to the state for collaboration, let them work towards assisting the women, especially rural women that is even very dangerous for them to identify early warning of cancer. From Kano report says that the disease affects more than 12 million women in Nigeria with 300 cases recorded every month in Kano alone. Getting these vaccinations and then uh, make them, making them available at primary health care levels for young girls between 9 to 14 years. Studies have actually shown that um, these ages actually mount the most immune responses to this vaccination. Experts therefore encourage women to undergo the testing to detect early changes in the cervix that may lead to cancer. Achari Maxwell, NTA News. Thank you, Ashari. And my guest is still in the studio, Dr. Basi Okwesen, Director of Disease Control and Humanization, National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. You've had the report, you had what the respondents have said. Is the vaccine mandatory? And, you know, they had to reach areas, the local governments and the councils are where they will be targeted. How are you going to go about that? First, I want to plead with the Nigerians that we don't need to wait to be forced to take your daughters that are eligible for the vaccination but to plead with you and let you understand the fact that this vaccine is very very safe and effective we have seen from the latest report April 2022 US that started the vaccination in 2006 that study have shown that it is 88 percent reduction in the number of the cases from this infection in that country and of course this will eventually eventually save those people that are prevented from those diseases like the cancer that kills and so on we shouldn't wait to be forced to take the vaccine. It is very safe and effective. How it will be delivered, we have delivery strategies, but the fixed strategy and the outreach strategies. In the fixed strategy from the launch date and that first week of intensification, every health facility from the tertiary, secondary, primary health care that gives routine immunization in Nigeria will be open to administer the vaccine to the eligible girls. At the same time, the you're same launching time. in Abuja, other states will be joining yes, on we'll the same day. we'll also be launching at the same time. Okay. And then we will also have outreach teams. Those outreach teams will visit schools. We are targeting getting to all the schools that have eligible girls. There will also be visits to IDP camps. All the local governments, the wards, Every ward in every local government, in every state that is implementing, will have these fixed teams that will go to every identified places in the school, in the communities, in the displaced environment, and so on that we've talked about. They have to reach areas that don't have the health facility. They've, the states, the LGS have been supported to develop daily implementation plan that they will visit this area to make sure that 
every nook and corner of this country in all the states that have been implementing are being visited and the girls given the vaccine. I plead with Nigerians, don't allow anybody to deceive you. It's a good opportunity we have to prevent our children from having infection with human papilloma virus, eventually developing cancer and dying from deaths that would have been prevented. You know, there, there are lots of superstition. Uh, the polio and the COVID-19 saga is still, you know, hanging around and, uh, the, you know, the superstition and rumors that this vaccine is supposed to stop girls from having children, reduce population and all that. So in your interaction with traditional rulers and religious leaders, how are you able to, you know, synergize with them to educate and create awareness, sensitize the public on the need for the, their daughters and boys to get this vaccination, although we're starting with the girls in Nigeria? I will, I will try to respond to these in two areas. First, the rumors. Second, engagement with the traditional leaders. For the rumors, we are aware when the polio vaccine was introduced, there were a lot of rumors that it would cause infertility and so on. The vaccines were administered. We appreciate the religious traditional leaders who have been in the forefront, the Sultan of Sokoto and the rest of them who are doing a great job. Today, we can see without anybody telling us the reduction in the number of cases of these crippled people on the way. We can remember far back in this country where every year we have over 333,000 persons being paralyzed. For now, we don't have those cases and we are not seeing those crippled people on the way again begging. This is evidence-based. The vaccine works and we can also see that some of those children that were given those vaccines then, the polio vaccines, are delivering now. Some of them are grandparents now. They have grandchildren. So the people that were saying the vaccine will cause infertility should see that these children have lived. We have reduced the lamb uh, that we have on the, our street and they are contributing to the economy. During the um, COVID um, pandemic also, as the vaccine was coming out, we could hear people say, if you take the vaccine, you will run mad. The vaccine was brought in, people were taking, there was no madness. The next we heard was they will all die after six months. Six oh, months two came years. and passed. They now came and said six, two years. After the six months passed, nobody died. They now say two years. Two years came and passed. Nobody is saying anything. It's three and a half years now. Our president should, good example, take, took the vaccine first. All of us took the vaccine. It's now three years, eight months we took the vaccine. Nobody has died. So these rumors will always come. But just to tell Nigerians that, and we have also heard the same thing coming through that, oh, the human papilloma virus, is going to cause infertility for our girl child. This is not true. US have used it, UK can have used it. And we have also seen right in Africa, we have 11 countries that have introduced before us in Nigeria. The first to reintroduce was Rwanda when they introduced in 2011. We have seen about already 62% reduction in the number of cases of infection from human papilloma virus in that country. So we have even the South Africa, Ethiopia, Lesotho, Cote d'Ivoire, all of them have introduced this vaccine in Africa. So the vaccine is safe. Please, all those that go about giving one form of rumor of the other, I will advise we stop it and give our girl child, the boy child, when we bring in the boys, opportunity to get vaccinated and be protected against infection with human papilloma virus and uh, extension, the complications that come with it in the future. And on that note, Dr. Basi, Okwesen, Director of Disease Control and Immunization, Niger National Primary Health Care Development Agency. Thank you so much for coming on Weekend File and educating us on the importance of taking the vaccine and making sure our daughters get it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and thank you Nigerians for listening. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Thanks for rejoining us. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has reiterated the commitment of his administration to develop talent through sports in Nigeria. He made the commitment when he declared the 7th National Youth Games Open in Asaba, Delta State. Details on these and more with Bade Adele on Sports Update.
The seventh edition of the National Youth Games in Asaba Delta State has been officially declared open. Minister of Sports Development, Senator John Edo, who declared the Games open on behalf of President Bola Tinobu, charged all participating athletes to compete fairly and shun all forms of antisocial behavior. <laughs> In the meantime, Nigerian wrestlers to the World Wrestling Championship in Belgrade, Serbia, are back in the country. Nigeria secured one bronze medal through Oduayu Adekoroye after defeating Ovira Kamaloglu of Turkey by 9 to 5 points in the 57 kilograms freestyle wrestling category of the championship, which served as Olympic qualifiers. The victory thus ensured that the Kuroi becomes the first Nigerian wrestler to automatically qualify for Paris 2024 Olympic Games. With sports update, Badi Adeleye, NT News. And that's Weekend File for this week. Thanks so much for watching. I am Jumai Yusuf. NTA, you can't be Dutch. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You can watch NTA International live on your TV, computer, iPad, tablet and phone. Log on to visiontv.co.uk and click on entertainment. Then NTAI. You can also download the iOS or Android app on your mobile devices. To watch NTA International on the go, anywhere in the world. NTA International. Your window to the world.